Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuation here, and in this video, I'm going to show you solution for question 4 from the May 2014 PUA paper 2. If you want to see these solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so this question has to do with depreciation, but they start us off by asking for some definitions. Define each of the following accounting terms. Give one example in each case. So the first thing they're asking us to define is fixed asset. So we know we no longer call them or refer to them as fixed assets. We refer to them as non-current assets. So let's get our definition going now. So it says a non-current asset is anything, or I should say any asset that the company owns that is expected to provide benefits for more than one accounting period. For example, a building, a motor vehicle, etc. The list is quite a long list, right? But again, the major point there is that it's an asset that is long lasting. And more specifically, it's expected to provide benefits for more than one year. Okay, what's the next thing they're asking us to define? The useful life. Well, that's a relatively easy one. The useful life of an asset, as we could see here, uh, is the number of years for which the asset is expected to provide benefit or be of use. For example, one year, five years, 10 years, etc. Okay, and the third item they want us to define is net book value. So we should know that, right? The net book value of a non-current asset is the difference between the cost of the non-current asset and the accumulated depreciation attributable to that asset. For example, if the asset costs 4000 and there is accumulated depreciation on that asset of 1000 then the net book value is 3000 which is 4000 minus 1000 Okay, let's take a look at part B to this question. So it reads that on the 1st of May 2013, Farley Caterers owned two depreciable assets consisting of a delivery van and an industrial stove. The following information was provided. So they've given us some information in a table down here. So we have delivery van, industrial stove, cost price for delivery van 200,000, industrial stove 60, and net book value, delivery van 140, industrial stove 38.4. So as we just saw, net book value is the difference between the cost and the accumulated depreciation on the asset. So what this table is telling us is telling us that there is or that, or that there has already been depreciation on both of these assets. In the case of the delivery van, the difference between 200,000 and 140 is 60,000. So there is $60,000 worth of accumulated depreciation on the van already. And for the industrial stove, that is like about 21,600 worth of depreciation. Okay, let's take a read of the rest of the information. It says the company charges depreciation on its assets as follows. So let's see what they're telling us here. In the first case, delivery van at the rate of 30% per annum using the straight line method. So the straight line method, if they're giving us a percentage, we're just going to multiply that by the cost of the asset. In the case of the industrial stove, at a rate of 20% per annum using the reducing balance method. So in this case, we're going to multiply the percentage by the net book value. All right, let's take a look at the requirements now. So first up, we are seeing calculate the depreciation charge on the delivery van for the year ended 30th April 2014 using the straight line method. Show you working clearly for three marks. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so back up in this table here, we are seeing that the delivery van has a cost of 200,000 and the information in the question said that the delivery van, right, the charge for depreciation for the delivery van is at a rate of 30% per annum using a straight line method. So all we really have to do is find, is take the cost, which is 200,000, multiplied by 30%, and that will give us the depreciation charge for the year for the delivery van. Cool. Let's take a look at the next part of the question. Okay, so part two of the question is asking us to draw up a balance sheet extract, statement of financial position extract for the van, showing the cost the accumulated depreciation and the net book value as at 30th April 2014. All right, let's take a look and see how to start heading that up. Okay, so as we know, we headed up with the name of the entity, the name of the statement, the period to which it applies, and they're asking us for an extract of the balance sheet for the delivery van. So that's in the non-current asset section, and the headings for the columns are cost, depreciation, or rather accumulated depreciation and net book value. Now we are doing this extract for the motor vehicle, sorry, the delivery van. Let's take a look at the delivery van's information, please. So the cost of the delivery van is 200,000 and the net book value here is 140. 
Now, this information is on May 1st, 2013, and we are doing the balance sheet extract for the 30th of April 2014, which is one year later. So this network value will have to be adjusted for the current year's depreciation, which we found in the previous part of the question, the 60,000. So at the start of the year, as we could see here, the difference between 200 and 140 is 60. So there's already 60,000 worth of depreciation charge on the asset. During the course of the year, it depreciates again by another 60,000. So the total depreciation will be 120,000, which we'll see across here now. Right, so the cost of the asset is 200. The depreciation at the end of 20, well, 30th April 2014 is 120. Because remember, we had 60,000 brought forward at the start of, well, 1st May 2013. And the previous part of the question asked us to calculate the depreciation charge for the current year from 2013 to 2014, which was also 60. And 60 plus 60 is 120. And our net book value is simply cost minus the depreciation given us net book value. Okay, let's take a look at part three. So they are saying here, calculate the depreciation charge on the industrial stove for the year ended 30th April 2014 using the reducing balance method. Show working clearly. That's three marks. Okay, let's take a look at the information for the industrial stove. So we have here that the industrial stove costs 60000 We have net book value of 38400 And we were also told that the industrial stove is depreciated at a rate of 20% per annum using the reducing balance method. So to calculate the depreciation charge for the year, for this current year, we'll simply multiply the 20%, the depreciation rate, by the net book value. That is how you find depreciation charge for the year under the reducing balance method. So, see, calculation of depreciation charge on stove for the year ended April 30th, 2014. So we're gonna start with the cost. We have the accumulated depreciation 21.6 which gives us net book value of 38.4. So really and truly, you could have just started here, 38.4. So this, these first two lines weren't necessary, and you're multiplying that by the 20%, and you're gonna get 7,680. So it's really these things here that really count for anything. Okay, so let's take a look at the last part of the question now. Alrighty, so they want us to draw up the provision for depreciation account for the industrial stove, starting with the amount of accumulated depreciation as at 1st May 2013 as brought as balance brought forward, four marks. So they want the provision for depreciation account. Okay, so let's pull that up on that side. So as we saw with the industrial stove, we have a cost of 60,000 and a net book value at 1st April, sorry, 1st of May 2013 of 38.4. So the difference to get from cost and net book value, that's the difference is the depreciation. So to find the depreciation, you just subtract the 38.4 from the 60,000. That's gonna give us 21,006, which we saw in the previous part of the question. So let's put that there as the balance brought down. Now, why is it on the credit side? Remember, the provision for depreciation is a contra asset. Its function is to reduce the value or balance of an asset in the balance sheet. Assets have debit balances, to reduce debit balances, you have to have a credit balance or a credit item or an item with a credit balance. So the provision for depreciation has a credit balance because it is a contra asset. So that's 21.6. And remember the 21.6, how did we get that? That was the 60,000 minus the 38.4. Now we just found that the depreciation for the current year was 76.80. So you see in profit and loss, they should really say income statement. Sorry, one second. Right, income statement. And all we have to do now is find a total and put that as the balance on the next side as well, total on the next side as well, and bring that balance down to here, and we are done. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question four from the May 2014 PUA paper two. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and you should probably check out my website for some free POA handles that you might find useful. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.